be the change you want to see in your country. Otherwise, change the things you cannot accept in your country. This is the simple mandate of untold stories with our thrust on social transformation. Self-preservation is the primary rule of life. Issued commands are interpreted by the human brain. But what happens when this nerve center is diseased? This explains the plight of the mentally ill in our society. Persons we sometimes dismiss and disregard as a nuisance. Our police, on the other hand, are mandated to serve and protect. However, the dilemma unfolds when issued commands by the said authority cannot be interpreted by the mentally ill and the police themselves cannot or will not identify hallmarks of a decayed brain. Gunfire then becomes a soundtrack which too often brings this sordid sequence of events to a climatic end. For over 30 years, policymakers and the police have done nothing to reduce the convenient killings of mentally ill patients. Tonight, families tell untold stories that no family should. We hear from the trigger men as we psychoanalyze bedlam in the cerebral cortex. Part 2. You have no right to slap, strike, push, or otherwise assault members of the public in carrying out your duties, as I have seen from time to time. And on each occasion that I have seen it, it has been inappropriate. They kill my son. They kill my son. When distraught people and law enforcement come into contact with each other, many times there are tragic consequences. Whether it is ignorance, lack of training, self-preservation, mental instability, rule of law, the use of force transcends borders and cultures with the same horrific ending. What's going on? Who's that? What's going on? Drop that for me. Drop that for me again. Jay! Drop it! Jay! Drop it! Jay! Oh, you can't look down! Oh, you can't look down! Bravo, seven Drop it! Shots fired. Cover code three. Drop it, guy! Put the damn thing down! Put the screwdriver down! Put the screwdriver down! Drop it! This is a sight no mother should ever witness. A schizophrenic son. A phone call to police for assistance to bring him in for treatment. But 11 seconds after they arrive, a son is dead. This sequence of events plays out many times in St. Lucia each year. And then you still opening fire on them and looking mother tell you don't shoot. You still shooting like you hasty to kill people and now go just go like that. So it is. August 10th, 2013. Mandy Louise of Chasse Babono, a known mental patient, was stopped and searched. Reports indicate that he brandished a knife. He was shot and killed by Constable 448 Turnis McVeigh of the Babono Police Station. August 15, 2008, mistaken tragedy befalls the sleepy community of Bouton Souffre. Marie St. Louis says she reported her mentally ill son to Souffre Police Wednesday but that son was not home when officers arrived. She says, to her dismay, she saw officers entering the home of another son, 44-year-old Timothy St. Luce. The mother of nine says she tried to tell officers that they had the wrong son, but they ordered her off the property. She says soon afterwards she heard a gunshot and rushed to the house, but was threatened by the officers. She says by the time she saw her son, he was dead with a wound to his abdomen. Seven years later, I discussed the disturbing situation with a mother still in mourning. Is Timothy Gemelli Golden Hope? No. No, no. Gemelli Web Pies Docte Pou Pou Pap Gonsay Velba Gonsay. Pas Gemelli Golden Hope. Pas Pate Lotti Baila. Kikaila. Ikabon Mansay Problem. So, Gemelli Joa Police Vinla. Sakifet. 
Je vois la police venir, moi, je suis ici. Je vois trois policiers passer et descendre, des noms de femmes. Je me dis aussi, si ces petits là vont venir garder, ils ne sont pas déjà allés par là. Et puis, ils vont aller côté de Timofi. Je me dis que je venir, je me dis en bon lait, je suis en bon chot pété. Est-ce que Timofi est dans la route là, la femme de police là un petit bout de coute là, c'est pas tes pièces de coute là, il était un petit bout de coute là, là-bas, ça douce, un petit bout de coute là, il était qu'à fouiller. Upon arrival in the area, the deceased was also suspected to be mentally challenged, picked up a cutlass. It is alleged that he was repeatedly asked by the officers to put down the cutlass. He advanced towards the officers with the cutlass and he was shot in the process and subsequently succumbed to his injuries. They conducted a search in the area for that particular brother, but they were unable to locate him. So what they did, and in the company of the mother, they went to another brother. And when they arrived at the place there, the other brother, that is where the situation came involved in the use of the cutlass. Ridiculously, the mentally disturbed brother still roams the community of Canaries, while the sane one is just another police shooting statistic. Sadly, this madness goes on unabated. During the first half of 2015, a quarter of the 462 killed by the police in the United States were mentally unstable people. The vast majority were armed with weapons like knives, rocks and screwdrivers. More often, the police officers were called by the relatives, worried that a mentally fragile person was behaving erratically. The underlying strokes in all these untold stories paint a portrait entitled Zero tolerance for madness. No, drop it. Drop the knife. Drop the knife. I'm gonna go at his hand. The Gabriel family from Larichus Viewfort have nursed a family schizophrenic for over 35 years. 17. Il commence à servir pas bon. Il commence à faire bagaille, il fait bagaille. Mon cachot lui, mon cachot mon fait mettre bali. Fait bagaille bali. C'est même bagaille. Et aimer aller golden hop. Il y a si ça là combien de fois Et le bail là, ah sui, bail con qui ça est grave. Malade là. Malade là. Malade là sui. Il a parlé, 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 il a parlé, il a fait chose là, de il capable bien puis moi. Lay pour oui mais là qui mange il cahier il a cool il a cool mais il a pris une pile ça mais il a quoi j'ai jamais de manger du bali il pas aimer gourmet et l'autre monde non 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 pas chez mes gourmets personne pas chez mes l'autre gens c'est pas chez mes chez mes chez mes pas chez mes gourmets personne mais là t'es un bête il a cru il s'est mis non fou il parle qu'à gourmet pas qu'à gourmet est-ce que c'est une pièce nos qui te cavine ici à bien garder chez mes pièces nos pièces nos moi chez mes pièces nos joie avant sa fête, qui manière il y a chose quoi? Il dit là il a parlé, parlé, il a parlé, il a parlé, il a parlé, il a fait chose, il a parlé. Il a dit bon chemin, il a pas bien, il a pas bien, il a pas bien. Ah ouais ça pas bon pour lui, ça. Il va couper police. Il va être traité. Pour qui c'est police ou qui est à l'hôpital là? L'hôpital nos qui est venu, il va jamais, puis là tu vois jamais dit mais ça, tu dois dire mais pour qui est nos? Je suis un homme qui a été nommé, je suis un homme qui a été nommé, je suis un homme qui a été nommé. 
when I came, my mother told me from yesterday that Simon is quarreling and talking, so she wants him to go up for treatments. So she told me, when I take my daughter to town to go to the station and ask the policeman whether they can come and pick him up to take him up for treatment. You know, because they know about him, they, because that's where we always make the report for years now. So they know. Most officers, as long as you tell them the name, they, will, they, will, they know who he is. They will ask you if he's Makabu, because that's how they call him. Once you tell them, yes, it is Makabu, they know where to meet him. They usually come here, they'll talk to him. There's a lady officer, she always come and she speak to him and she live with him. That officer is the first time I, was, uh, I ever heard of that officer, the guy who came here with a the gun. They never come with guns when they are coming. They always come and they talk to him. Sharon, why did you go to the police? But that's where we usually go. They never send us anywhere to say, well, they are not the one responsible to take him up there. Go somewhere else. They never tell us that. Have you ever heard stories of the police killing mentally ill people in St. Lucia? Yes, I have heard of several, several cases. And it never dawned on you that that might be a possibility in your brother's case? No, because the way when they come here and it happens, that happens, they come and they always go with him with no trouble. They never have any trouble. He never fights with them or anything like that. They always take him peacefully and go with him. In any of those cases, have you ever tried to get a nurse involved? No, we have, no, we have never been to the health centre for him, no. The police will say that it's not their job to... No, to yes, it is not their job, but why they never tell us that it is not their job and go to that particular department or go to that place, they never tell us anything. They always come. They never said it is not their role to do it. But you know that the possibility of the police killing your mentally ill brother exists. Yes, yes, but at the time that never came to mind because for so long, for I show it's over, it's over 20 years they are doing it. It's over 20 years it takes time to that to, to, to that off. And that never happened. Bon matin, by la fête. Ça, Simon de café. Là, pour le Slavini, pour le Slavini, il y a des marches là. Marido, la mère de café, il te bali, il te bali. Bon, là, il y a ce là, il y a police là, il met à couille, sur le moteur boss, il y a un petit peu de sac, 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 il y a un long rifle. Il y a un petit peu de sac, 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 il y a un petit peu de Là, il va être premier balle là. Mais là, ouais, ouais, pas chute, chute, monsieur, pas chute, chute, pas chute, chute. Il dit, à la fin, l'autre balle, c'est puis, il dit, c'est Robert. Robert, qui s'est dit, Robert, boulette, mais c'est dit, tu vas aller à la gérer au slater. À ce moment-là, il vient, 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 il Ça va me la peine tous les jours à parler. Je ne vais pas faire rien. Je vais aller dans le GCP, parce que je ne vais pas de l'argent. Je ne vais pas me faire rien. J'ai vu le gars qui est venu de avec deux stones dans sa main. Tu sais ce que je veux dire? Mais normalement, ce gars va toujours aller dans le fond et se couler. Je vais vous montrer. Donc, quand il passe, j'ai vu le Jeep qui est venu de là. J'ai vu un officier qui est venu de là. The next one come out with a pistol in his hand, he check a rifle, and he's suddenly coming up the road there. When the guy come there, when he reach there, he, the police tell him, like, stop, put the stones down. So he asking the police what problem he have with him. Understand why he telling you, and he's, he's keep going on doing his business. Then, the other police now, coming out now with the rifle now, coming there and telling him, stop. Now the other police right there, with him, can just hold him down. I mean, you're trained for that, right? People could have just put the man down there, right there. He was too close to the man. The man could not even fire the stone. Because the size of the stone, the man don't have no power. Took the man just have the stone in his hand normally. You check, I never see that man attack nobody in the neighborhood. So eventually the ex-police telling him, put down the stones. He turn his back on the other police and he go. None of them want to stop him. So the other one with the rifle telling him, put down the stone. So I see, I notice him taking out the shots in the, in the thing and he put in the shots. Returning shots in the, in the rifle. So the mother come up to him and tell him, what, what, what are you doing? Don't shoot us. And he says, rubber bullets he have in it. You check. And within they give him one, they give him two, he drop. He had already dropped the stone before they fired the shot. Because when he turned his back, he dropped the stone right there. See? 
When he continued walking, the other police, a red skin police, I don't really know his name, telling him stop. So eventually he didn't stop. If I, the police give him one, and the one he give him, he turned around and he dropped down. You see? And his, and his knee too, eh? he didn't go down fully. He gave him a neck shot. And that neck shot, I feel it was too close, it killed him. The police would say that they were in fear for their life. Simon had rocks and they did not know whether he was going to hit them with it. They called upon him to put the rocks down. The officer would say that he was in fear for his life. That's what the officer said. That is what he said, he was in fear of his life. But had the officer, the officer, you come in for a mentally ill person, you come in with two guns. When a mentally ill person see you approaching with two guns, what you will, what you expect from them? He picked up, he picked up the stone. Yes, he had the stone, but he never sent the stone after the officer. But at the same time, my mother calling on to him. If the officer didn't have the gun, Simon would have listened to my mother. My Simon would have listened to my mother and go with the officer. It is all, all what happened there is because of the guns the officer approached him with. That is what, that, that's what caused all what went on there. But Simon never sent the rock after the officer. To the ministry officials who have been saying for the longest time that a task force needs to be put together to deal with mentally ill people who have to go into treatment, considering that they've been saying this for over 30 years, what would you like to say to them? Well, it is high time they put that in place because too many mentally ill people have been killed, been killed by the policemen. It's high time they, they put that into, into, into effect. It's high time. When we return... The last shot, the police was standing right here. Right here. Another mother invites the police to her house to kill her son. And later... I shot this man with an M16 and this man was just not stopping. How long does it take to qualify as a nurse? How long must one train to become a school teacher? Do bus drivers and taxi drivers take special tests? A police officer must interact with all members of the public and most times these interactions are with less than the holiest of souls. So how long does it take to qualify to become an officer? The answer is only six months. Is there ever retraining on how to de-escalate tense situations or training required to handle the mentally ill? Does training in firearms involve the use of appropriate weapons for various hostile situations? Are officers trained to use service revolvers to disable rather than to kill? What avenues are available to a mother when her child is acting up in a delusional state? Reluctantly, on November the 11th, 2014, Coletta Severin found herself with 21 damning questions and in a grave psychological quagmire. He doesn't go out, he doesn't, he never somebody, he doesn't drink, he don't smoke. He used to smoke before, but it's a long time since after he, he started working, he not smoking, he don't drink, he's never to go out, you know. Has he ever been to Golden Hope? Never. Has he ever been to the wellness center? No. Has he ever been diagnosed as mentally ill? No. But what happened one time he felt sick and he told me, Mommy, he's feeling sick. And I took him to the hospital. The doctor told him, Well, he needs to relax himself, you know, stop thinking, probably he's thinking and stuff like that. Then, but he never, to say, well, got sick to go to the hospital or anything. Never went to the asylum. So he's never been to never, the asylum? Never, never, never. He's never been diagnosed officially as being a mental no, patient? No, no, no. Yeah. Why would everybody assume that he is? <laughs> well, I don't know. That's what you know, people already. That's how Russians. So what that is what in Christopher's think. behavior would make people believe that he had a mental problem? Because he wasn't being around people. Is... Most people would say that a mother is the last person to see deficiencies in her children. Is it that perhaps you did not realize that he had a problem? 
Mm, I wouldn't say that. I knew Christopher. The problem I would tell you Christopher had, what maybe we were that take him, you see, after he lost his job, after they fired him, I know he used to be thinking of that a lot. They call me the morning, early in the morning, they tell me, Mommy, since last night Christopher behaving bad, I say, what? And only now you're calling me? So when I see that, I come, I rush and I come. When I go, I pass that side, I look through his window, I saw him. He there looking at, I say, hey, Christopher, Christopher, what happened to you? He not answering. Tell me, a time he tell me, mm -hmm. you know, like a tone of voice in him. I say, what? Something is wrong with Christopher. I run back inside, I tell the, the sisters, Christopher is sick, Christopher, something happened to Christopher. Christopher is not his normal self. I say, mommy, but since last night, Christopher mash up the door. Christopher mash up, I had an electric kettle. He mash it up, he ma no. The uh, iron, he mash up the iron. See, mommy start fighting in the house, we throwing things all. See, it's, it's when the children say, if you're not behaving yourself, we're calling the police, we're burning you hot water, then the children say, all that. I say, all, all that happened last night, and you all call me, you know? I say, eh, eh. Then, anyway, when I see that he's coming out, he's going back inside of the, the little house there. When the time I see come there, he's looking at us, he come back, he goes, I say, what happened? I say, Christopher, Christopher, what happened to you? And I try to see if I could calm him down and stuff like that. But mm -mm. Then I had a friend, I went to call a friend, and tell a friend, look at Christopher, Christopher is not himself, I see him. Well, how I try, you know, to fing him. I said, boy, what am I going to do? When I see three o'clock is taking place, nobody's coming to assist me. I say, well, let me go to the police station. So then, why did you decide to go to the police station? Did you think of contacting the, the hospital or the mental wellness center if you believed that he had a mental problem at the time? What happened? I say, but I know he's... I say, well, probably if I contact the police, then they'll be able to help me out, take him to the hospital, because that's why I wanted to take him. You understand? To take him to the hospital, and then they would be able to do something for him. Now, because have you ever heard stories of mentally ill people being killed by the police? Yes, I heard that, but I was not expecting that the police would come in that manner way. You understand? I wasn't thinking that they would come to shoot him or anything. You understand? Because it's not that I wanted. I just wanted them to take him with, take him away, you know, so that they could take him to the hospital. But apparently the police and them came. The others wanted to put the handcuff on him, but the other one that shot him, he was hasty. He got, like, he got nervous, he got, he got, I don't know, he got disturbed. From the time I, I tell him, no, what happened to you, you're so hot like that? Cool out yourself, you try to put the handcuff on him. Look, the other police trying to ask you to assist him, you know. He done threw Christopher down already, he put his knees in Christopher's chest, lying down on the floor. I said, but no, that's not the way, try to put the handcuff on him, you know. When, <coughs> I don't know what time, Christopher just pushed them and he get up, when he get up, he run in the corner there. When he run in the corner there, the other officer, trying and tell him, put the handcuff, Awa. He cannot put the handcuff on. Two of them hold Christopher, they cannot put the handcuff on Christopher. Oh, we'll have to shoot him. I said, no, you cannot do that. No, don't shoot him. Put the handcuff on him instead. You know, when he run there. But all the time, Christopher is trying to shield at the back of me. You know? And the other officer, when I see him, like he come in, I say, no, I try to beat the guy. I said, no, 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 don't try and shoot my son. I tell you that day, I don't know. God, my... Was Christopher trying to hurt the police? Nothing at all. All I told Christopher was just try to stand up at the back of me to shield. But I keep telling the officer, try to put the handcuff on him, to take him out of But the officer, is, that, is not, that was not on his mind, as though his mind is to shoot Christopher. When I see that, he took the gun from the other officer. And when I see that, I say, oh my God, today my son will be dead. I tell him, no, no, don't shoot him, don't shoot him. When Christopher moved from there, Christopher walked there. You see that tire there, when the boy reached there, he shot the boy. Give him the first bullet there, sir. 
When I say he keeps screaming, I say, no, don't shoot him, don't shoot him. My daughter keeps screaming, don't shoot him, don't shoot him. The other one, the smaller one was inside. When she heard the noise, she come outside, she's screaming, don't shoot him, don't shoot him. When he took the first bullet, he fall on and he get up and he look at the officer. I just get weak, I don't know what happened to me again, I don't know. And I, all I see, I see him when he run behind the house. When he run behind the house, the officer run behind him behind the house. Where did it happen? Where did well, it start? That, the little house was right here. When the police came in, they were at the front of the house, you know, trying to get my brother to come out. Then when they started wrestling, he fell right here, here in the, that's the first, and then when the, that's where the police had his knee in my brother's throat, and I was saying, you're trying to kill my brother, look, you're choking him, you're choking him, and they wrestled till they reached there. My mother was there standing all the way, she would have went all the way there, we were still in the police was standing right here with the they were there like in line the mm -hmm. police there and he said give me the gun give me the gun and there when they give my brother the first shot my brother ran up there to that there they had a flower right there i took it out and then when he wake up and he ran he ran at the back of the house so and the police running behind him the others following him the others were following him because all, all four of the police, the, the police in the white uniform didn't come. He was standing up by the little house. He stood there. They were, he ran so. The last shot, the police were standing. The last shot, the police were standing right here. Right here. And my brother was all the way there. There's a fence. This bush was taller than that. That tree was all the way there and my brother turned so and the police shoot him there when the, the police shot your brother at that point was your brother holding stones trying to nothing, at the police? nothing nothing just the handcuff on one side of his hands at that point are you certain that the police his life was not in danger no my brother was my brother just stopped because he couldn't go nowhere again he couldn't jump the fence nowhere he just stand up there like you know he freeze he shock He's shocked when he reached in the end. They're like, you know, and the police just fired a gun. Eh? My brother didn't have nothing. My brother didn't pick up no stones, nothing to harm nobody. The police and he fell the, there. The police press statement says that your brother got hit one time. No. Three bullets. But the press statement said he was hit one time. There in his shoulder and in his back because then, I actually saw yeah, the thing. Yeah. I when it when he so ran, when it grazed him, yes. I cried because I saw the thing graze my brother in his back. And then me one there, three. Get one there. And one there, one there one he one took one. the last one. There. Yes. There. That's the one that killed him. When he reached there, when the police reached there, the police just crank the gun and I stand him up right there. Saying, Don't kill my brother, don't kill my brother. And the police just fired a gun because my, my brother reached and he just freeze like he don't know where to go again. He just freeze and he turns so. And the police shoot him. And I fall on my knees when I see that. That hurt me. How could this have been avoided? Well, there are so many things you could have done. When the police come there, they shouldn't came with guns because my brother wasn't harming nobody. They want my brother to see this big gun. You must understand as well that sometimes people who are not in their right mind can be violent. They can pe put people's lives in danger. I know that. The officer, that's his tools. His gun is his tool. If your life is in danger, for example, if the, your brother picked up a, a stone and he was going to hit you, the police is empowered to stop him. My brother and wasn't harming none of us. But the police didn't know that in the beginning, so that's probably why they carried their guns. Why, if he was acting up this way, why didn't you all try to get the medical authorities involved instead of the police? Well, I don't know about that one. I cannot answer that question because my brother, as he told me, when the police come, they could just like they would address us sisters to bring him someplace where they could where they could check up. We wasn't expecting that all that would have happened. I always like to get the report firsthand, usually from the police, to understand what transpired before I could speak to a particular issue. But of course, like we've said in the ministry, we 
have started the team approach that team health in any district, health district, will not only include nurses and district medical officers, but will include police like we are in Barbono, teachers, welfare officers, social workers, so it's a larger team. And so, of course, the officers will know what to do and if they need the support of the mental wellness team or individual at the health center at the time they could call on for that particular assistance. As we have been aware, the mental health teams that were instituted from years ago were disbanded by the former administration. This administration is now getting the resources and putting the mental health teams back at the primary health care, and I speak of health centers. Sometimes I struggle not to be emotional with these vexing stories. I struggle not to be critical of policymakers and the rhetoric which they spew as a matter of convenience. We simply cannot allow the minister time to echo repeated words on such critical situations. The truth is, there is no medical intervention team. There is no outreach to deal with these occurrences. There is no standard operating procedure by the police. And there is no end in sight to this madness. When we return, we hear firsthand the story from behind a shotgun told by a police officer who has been successfully sued for blowing off a madman's leg. Bernard Dasheville enlisted in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in 1983. Throughout his years of service, he was seconded to the Special Services Unit. Known as a no-nonsense soldier, Dasheville had the unenviable task of dealing with several mentally disturbed citizens in varying states of delusion. But one particular call would go on to set legal precedence in St. Lucia. I was at the SSU. Um, well, man in the shift on that, on that afternoon and a call came in from Central Police Station asking for assistance to escort a, a lunatic, a suspected lunatic to the um, uh, mental hospital. So myself, no. Two of my guys and myself, we left and went across. But when we got there, Central police station had a few officers on the scene, but they were not that close to, to the scene. The fire service was there also, along with some of the personnel, you know. So when I got there, I questioned them as to what was happening. They said that the chap there is so violent that they cannot confront him, so they had to, like, move back a bit. I said, well, okay. I, I went in. Um, that was on the third lane in La Clary. But you had persons coming from work at the time. You had school children coming from school and wanting to go home and whatnot. But he was so violent that people couldn't get into the, in, in, into the alley. So I went in there and spoke with his, his sister. And the first thing she said was, don't shoot my brother. I said, well, okay, no problem. I didn't come here to shoot him because she saw us carrying firearms and whatnot and whatnot. And then um, uh, I went to, a bro to, to his brother. The brother said the same thing, don't shoot my brother. I said, well, okay, no problem. I said, fellas, you know what? We'll have to leave because if these people already behave in that type of way, you know, towards us, we will have to leave. Then persons start running, coming towards me and say, Dashi, no, you have to take this man out of there. You understand? Because the man, he's so violent that everybody in the area is afraid and whatnot and whatnot. So I started walking to him along with my fellows, you know. I said, let me tell you, uncle, we didn't come here to harm you. We came here to take you to the hospital for treatment and whatnot. The man started picking up stones and bottles and, you know, and start behaving. But I started, I, you know, I continued walking towards him with the fellows. So when I notice, you know, I will not be able to hand this man, handle this man, you know, like physically. I told the chaps we'll have to use the rubber bullets, you know. Take me to the moment of the first shot. Well, when the first shot um, hit him, he, you know, he like, he didn't go down. 
It was like nothing to him. You fired that shot? No, I had one of the guys there firing the, the, the shot because I was carrying a 12 gauge shotgun. So when I, when I noticed, he took like about three or four and he wasn't, when it wasn't doing like nothing to him. He was picking up the same rubber because we had those big rubbers. He was picking up the same rubber and throwing it back at us. Really? Yeah. So I said, my God, if that cannot stop this man, we have problems, you know? So then I'm, uh, I continued walking towards him. Now there is this, his, his dad, I think was sick, he said, on his dying bed in, the, in, the, in that balcony. So he jumped into the balcony. Yeah, he jumped into the balcony and he said, kill my dad on the inside. That was what he said. Kill my dad on the inside. I said, we didn't come here to kill your dad. I know I, I kept on trying to pursue him, you know, to, to go to the hospital to, to get his medication and whatnot. And I was actually begging, stooping down, you know, but this man was off. As when I got close to the balcony, the man pulled a knife and wanted to stab me in my head. So I shot him in the leg. Shot, after, after he got shot, he was still, you know, agitated and still fighting. We had, you know, like four, five of us had to cover him up there, put on the handcuffs. And actually we had to be dragging him because he was so, I think he, he damaged the, um, um, certain parts in, on, on the ambulance as well. Bring me back to that moment, how you felt when you advanced this man, he's in the balcony and he grabs the knife. What is that feeling? What comes to your mind? Well, um, it was not my first time dealing with a suspected lunatic. And um, uh, well, at the time you felt, you know, I feel I felt a little bit threatened, you know. So that's why I had to, I, I had to use the, the the firearm to stop him. Someone might be looking at this and say, this is a big burly police officer yeah. who is trained to take down all sorts of suspects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are three of them. There's one mad guy. Sure. Why couldn't that corporal and his guys tackle and take down this man instead of shooting him? Well, like I said, we use reasonable force before. That was the rubber bullet since he was so violent that we could not have we, to tell you the truth, we would not be able to do it because he was too violent. At that point, before you, sh you shot this guy, did you make a conscious decision that no matter what happens, I'm going to try to preserve this man's life by shooting him in somewhere that I know he may survive? Yes, I did. I did that. Because like I tell you, I could have shot him like anywhere in the torso. I chose the leg. The victim, Mitchum Black, sued Corporal Dasheville and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and was awarded $32,000 in damages, plus $10,000 in cost. Justice Indra Hariprasad Charles said, the conduct of the corporal was not merely overzealous. It was tortuous. How could this situation have been avoided? Well, Again, you know, he was not in the right, right, right frame of mind, and I'm, uh, I don't think there was too much we could have done, you know. But left for me, deal, I would not have shot this man, you know. If only, you know, he was able to listen or, you know, like calm himself, and we would have just taken him, you know, away nicely to the hospital, get his medication and whatnot. I would have even given him a ride back to his home if I had to. I have done it before, you know. In the ideal world, we speak of a team, an intervention team mm -hmm. dealing with people like that. But based on your experience, what do you think an intervention team could have done differently to what you did that day? Oh, boy. When you say an intervention team, you mean nurses? Nurses. I don't think any, there's anything they, 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 they would have been able to do, you know. You've dealt with other cases like that before. 
what are some of the more memorable ones? You know what? The problem with the force, by the time a call would come in and say suspected lunatic, the first set of persons they're going to call is the SSU. And I don't know why. It's like everybody else, well, during my time, that's how it was. Everybody else would like suspected lunatic, no, they're afraid of these people, they would call the SSU. Be it female, be it whatever, and we were the ones who had to go on and, and, and deal with, with these type of things. And it was not an easy thing deal to deal with these people because some of these people, I tell you, are way violent. The only option you have is to shoot these people. When some of them, you, you have no choice. That you know, just to just you get this so far, they, because I'm not going to stay there and let a madman kill me. To tell you the truth, you know. So you, it's like going to war. You have to defend yourself vigorously. You know, and we don't. The only thing we have is the rubber bullets. On the shotgun, that's the most, you know, I would say the most appropriate weapon. Well, back in our days, we call it the stopper. <laughs> you understand? Because of its power and, you know, the damage it can cause. To, you know. But if a police officer is going on a mission like that, he already knows that this person, the way they're acting, it's not the norm. Mm -hmm. They're not in their faculties. In the, yeah, true. Why would a police officer go with the stopper? Why not? Okay, guys, no matter what happens, before we leave, let us understand something. We are getting this man to the hospital. We are not going to put ourselves in danger, but mm -hmm. if we have to stop him, we'll use a small caliber and we're going to hit him somewhere where he's not going to die. At least we don't think he's going to die. Because in more than one situation, shotguns have been used. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's really the stopper. <laughs> Has there ever been a discussion about changing the modus operandi? You have to, you, you have to go with that thing. It's, there was this guy in Fulasho. He chopped up policeman once, I think, his ASP Antoine. And when, and when we went to get this man, this man had a cutlass tied to his hand. Tied. Huh? Yeah, tied to his hand. And that cutlass was as sharp as heaven knows. And his aim, I can tell you, was to chop or kill another policeman. And this man got shot almost about, got like about 30 something bullets. And imagine I shot this man with an M16, causing not minimum, maximum damage to other persons and property. And this man was just not stopping. We had to use the shotgun. We had to you use it. You shot him with a 16 and uh, he M16, didn't stop. M16, yeah on automatic, so you can imagine, and that thing's going through houses and going through people and just causing a, a havoc in, in, in the background. And this man was just coming forward. He, the man got shot with the shotgun. His leg was in bits, in ruin, and this man was still jumping on one leg, coming, you know? So anytime a policeman hear about a suspected lunatic, I, I'm telling you, they're going to go with it. That's the only thing that can stop some of these guys. There's been a continuous call for a special unit to deal with that. Considering what you've seen over the years and your special predicament being sued, what would be your advice to policymakers? My advice to the policymakers, they will... Somebody will have to be armed with whatever team that is going in there to do what, whatever. You must have an armed personnel. That's a must. I hear people talking about sending firemen and nurses to take suspected lunatic to hospital. How are they going to do? How are they going to get close to these people, Dale? How are they going to hold? This, how are you going to hold on to these people? You can't hold these people. When these people get sick, they get like an extra strength. They get, you know. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I, but it's, it's, it's the gun that have to stop the people. Like some of them, I can tell you. Just when you thought it was over. I heard pat out. I heard pat out. Pow, 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 pow. Later. <laughs> this is an all too familiar sight. Dead man in his 30s rests peacefully, ready to depart this earth. Mourners gazing at the face of death, 
twirling with a trillion unanswered questions. A weeping mother, herself a known mental case, lost for words and frozen in time. We as a parish community... The preaching priest beckoning for community forgiveness, allowing the process of justice to take effect. The farewells have an ominous feeling of anger, profound sadness and confusion as to the sequence of events which led to this untimely funeral of one of Sufre's most known psychiatric residents. All um, policemen know my brother was mentally ill because they used to see him on the road. All his mental life, he has been having his sack in his hand and an old cutlass in the sack, not in his hand. My brother came from the garden and there is an officer by the name of Craig Jabatis who stopped him to ask him to put the bag in the vehicle, which he did. After Craig is telling him, get inside. So he's asking Craig, what have you done? Craig is not answering. Craig is telling him, get inside. So when my brother realized he reached for his gun, my brother ran. Why is my brother running? He started firing shots behind my brother. One of the shots hit my brother in the leg. I saw four police officers. Whilst I was coming closer, I went to the bridge behind me. I saw four in the water, one standing on the Gibeon basket, and all that's five. So I ended up shouting, Oi, by your shirts. I saw the police shooting Kevin. When he was shooting Kevin, a friend came and a friend told me, No, come out there. I started crying, No, don't kill him. That's a man, man, that's there. Why are you doing him that? That's my auntie son that's there. Why, why? That's a madman. Do not do him that. Why are you doing him that? That's a madman. I saw the boy in the river. One hand and... Why is he there? I heard Flora still because I'm holding Flora. Flora nearly to cheer the lady dress. I'm saying to her, Flora, Flora, try and cool her. Try and cool her. No, no. Officer, don't shoot him. Officer, don't kill him. Don't kill the man. But he surrendered already. Don't kill him. Flora is saying that. But then, when the gunshot, when the, I heard patow, I heard patow, pow, 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 pow. And I was like, what is that? What is that? I saw Kevin standing under the river with his hands, with his hands up. When Kevin stand up in the river with his hands up, one police officer come towards Kevin. Other one come, two, three, and then four came towards Kevin. Started knocking him started knocking him, they knocked him with a gun, but the gun, they was knocking him with the gun, knocking him with the gun. When the police, when they start knocking they pull him. When they pull Kevin, he had a shirt on him, the shirt tear. They pull him again. When they pull him, one of the police officers trip him. When they trip him, he ended up falling in the river. The police officer put his feet on Kevin's stomach and they started knocking him in the river while he was lying down in the river. They started knocking him. Was he resisting? At the time I saw that, not really, uh, because they had already given him one in the leg. Because Clyde was there and Clyde, I could hear Clyde saying, if I have enough. I could hear Clyde was shouting their name and saying, why are you all doing him that? If I have enough. One of the police officers come, he give him a lash of stone. So when I see give Kevin the lash of stone, I started screaming and saying, if they knock him, if they shoot him, why do they have to do him that? Why? Why do they have to do him that? Kevin was lying down over there. When I look, when I glanced my eye to look at him, I saw he had a bullet gun someplace on his, his, um, on his abdomen, just there. And it was, there was an officer there at the time trying to you know, put something on the wound. They had one police officer, he took a white shirt and he put two words, Kevin Bailey. So when I come there, I tell the police officer, you all didn't have to kill him like that. I'm going to tell the law how I see you all kill Kevin. The, the police officer that was involved initially has, has several reports being made against him of, of not treating people right and, and 
and being aggressive and things. And then the police force should, should look into things like that and, and, and ask why. Why are people complaining about, about this particular person? And why is he the reason why we have a dead person today? Because had it had just taken the sack and the cutlass and say, well, okay, Kevin took off, I'll catch him another day, we would not have a death on our hands. I have heard about police brutality. And this is the first time in history I have ever witnessed that. Up to now, I have nightmares and I cannot sleep. To the man who shot your brother, mm -hmm. if he was watching this program, mm -hmm. if the police commissioner was watching that program, the Minister of Health, what would you like to say to them? I would like to tell them I need justice for my brother. Join us in part three of Bedlam in the Cerebral Cortex as we sit down to have a discussion with an M16. A psychologist explains the pathology of the brain and the madness which can be avoided. And of course, the Minister of Health is stuck in Wonderland, juggling the same toxic one. Excuse me, I'm speaking, you asked me a question. Could go on and on, the fool has never been told. Could go on and on, the fool has never been told. Could go on and on, the fool has never been told. Peace.